Hi friends, my name is Jenny and I'm back today to do another video. Today I'm going to be discussing my rankings as well as my broader thoughts on the six books in the final round of the Book 2 Prize 2020 fiction category. I am pre-filming this part of the video as I have finished all six books and am ready to talk about them as well as was planning on filming some other videos today anyway. However, I'm hoping to add at the very end of this video my live reaction to the winner of the prize, which I definitely have a clear winner in mind. I hope other people feel the same, but we'll find out next Saturday. But I wanted to talk about my thoughts as well as my rankings for the round. Additionally, I also wanted to mention that given that I'm sure most of the people watching this video are already familiar with the six books in the fiction category of the book two prize, I'm not going to go over a synopsis or any kind of in-depth blanket level thoughts about any of these six books, just talk about kind of my personal thoughts about them, given that I'm sure most of you already know what these six books are about if you have not already read them yourself. So starting in my number six place, we have A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. This one I gave 2.5 stars and unfortunately just really wasn't my cup of tea. I personally, while I love historical fiction, don't particularly enjoy historical fiction set in or around World War One, the interwar years, or World War Two, particularly in Europe, as I just find that such an oversaturated element of the historical fiction market and also just not really a time period in history that I find to be all that interesting. So this was already going to be a book that I was hesitant to like and while I did enjoy the kind of historical accuracy and research that went into this book I just couldn't really get over the hump of I just don't like inner warrior struggle fiction. Additionally I just really did not care for our main character Violet. I found her so independent to the point that sometimes it felt very selfish and self-serving and not necessarily like exhibiting kindness or like compassion towards others. I also just found some of her reactions to certain things, particularly her attitudes towards romantic relationships, to be a little odd and I just didn't fully understand why she made some of the choices she made. Particularly at the end, I was incredibly frustrated with everything that happened at the end. I felt it was very out of character for Violet. I will say though I did enjoy a lot of the side characters, particularly Gilda and Dorothy. I thought their side plot was really fascinating and would have liked more of that. And I also thought Louisa Pessel, who was a real person as we learned from the author's note, to also be really fascinating. Additionally, I will say in terms of the kind of historical research bit, I found Violet's walking holiday to be super fascinating and honestly would have loved if the whole book had been about a walking holiday. If anyone has any historical fiction books set about women doing a walking holiday, I would love to hear them as I thought that was so interesting and definitely wish it had been a bigger part of the novel. It just kind of felt like it was thrown in there because it was an interesting historical tidbit that Chevalier found. That was kind of the only element of like historical research that really engaged me. Also speaking of the kind of historical authenticity piece to this work, I also thought it was a bit too retrospective sometimes when talking about Nazi Germany and Hitler, given that the book is set in 1932-1933. Particularly in one scene towards the end of the novel, we have one character who is almost abrasive with his concern about an embroidery pattern having a swastika on it, which to me, considering the historical time period and the fact that this is 1933, I just didn't find it to be that believable that a character living in Britain would be that aware of the kind of greater meaning of the swastika. That obviously post-World War II globally we understand what the swastika kind of represented and the horrors they're in within Nazi Germany, many of which were kind of uncovered only during or shortly after the war. I just thought it was very odd that he had such a abrasive and intense reaction to a swastika and I'm curious if that was historically accurate to the time. Obviously there were people I'm sure living in Britain who were quite concerned about Hitler and the rise of Hitler based on kind of what they understood about Germany's politics but it just felt to me a little too retrospective. So that element alongside then everything else that happened at the end really brought my rating down of this book quite a bit and I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. Then in fifth place I ended up putting 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak which I ended up giving three stars. I actually talked about this one and read it for the semi-final round of the book two prize so I'll put a link to my rankings and review video for that round up in the cards above. But this one honestly was pretty forgettable for me. I don't really remember that much that happened even though I only read it about four months ago. I just didn't find 
the kind of way that the novel was structured to me to work very well for my like reading taste and also to feel that the novel was super cohesive. So definitely talk about that one more in that video if you want kind of more of my in-depth thoughts. Then moving on to spot number four which is the only other book that I read for this round of the booktube prize. We have The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Leftieri. This one I gave 3.75 stars. I did enjoy it although I think I had in mind that I was reading this one directly comparing it to my top three books that I'd already previously read and it ended up just never really comparing to those top three so it just fit very snugly in the number four spot. I did enjoy the kind of narrative style of this one. I thought the use of transitioning the flashbacks using a word in the chapter title that would complete the sentence in both the next chapter and the previous chapter I thought that was really well done and kind of a fun way to flow into the flashbacks. However, I did find some of those flashback chapters to just be a little confusing and not the most easy to follow, which granted I think makes sense for our main narrator having PTSD and experiencing a great amount of trauma that perhaps his memories of the experience of being a refugee and moving from Syria to the UK obviously would not be the most clear in his own mind. So that made sense. But at the same time it's not the most enjoyable reading experience. Additionally, and while I do think this was intentional to kind of explore how PTSD manifests in people's memories and kind of the way that they're able to talk about their experience. I just found that the characters all felt incredibly removed and I was not really able to fully understand everything about them. But again, I do think that was somewhat intentional on the author's part. So overall, I did enjoy this one and I would recommend it. I just kept thinking to myself, is this as good as my number three pick? and it wasn't. So number four, it was. Then moving on to my number three pick, which was one of the first books that I read for the book two prize. I believe I read it as the second book that I read for the quarterfinals, which I'll put a link to where I talk about this one and my number one pick up in the cards above. But that was Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. I think this explores its themes of faith and uncertainty and anger. So wonderfully and so critically that it was just a phenomenal piece of fiction. However, I do think at times, and this is part of what drew my rating down, at times it felt almost a little too philosophical and nuanced that the kind of premise of the work and that it is these women discussing what to do next after learning of the rape and assault that has been plaguing their community for now several years. The kind of philosophical nuances did feel a little out of character or potentially just unrealistic, which while I thought the philosophical elements of this book were fascinating, it just didn't quite make sense to me in terms of what the kind of narrative premise was. So I ended up giving this one four stars, would still recommend it, would be happy to see it win, although I do, as I said previously, really want my number one pick to win. Then moving on to my number two pick, which was Lanny by Max Porter. I read this one also for the semifinal round, so you can hear my full thoughts in that video linked up above. But I really enjoyed this one. I thought what Max Porter was trying to do in this novel, he accomplished very well. And I really enjoyed the kind of experimental form here, which is not usually something that I do enjoy, but I think it works really well for the story being told in this one. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this one quite a lot. I gave it 4.25 stars and it definitely is probably gonna be one of my favorite reads of the year which was something I was not expecting. I don't think I would have picked this book up had I not read it for the booktube prize. And then finally in my number one spot as you can tell is Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I absolutely love this one. I think it is a masterpiece. I wish it had won the woman's prize although I'm also excited to read Hamnet but I yeah really enjoyed this one. I think it deserves to win the booktube prize as I think it is by far the most accomplished work that I've read for the book two prize. And this actually was the very first book that I read. So it kind of was all downhill from there. Just kidding. There were some interesting books definitely in my selections, but I'm really glad that I was able to read this one back way back in the quarterfinals and that it has continued on through since the quarterfinals as I think it definitely deserves it. So Bernadine Evaristo's The Girl Won't Other is my number one pick and I'm hoping that it'll be the book announced on Saturday. Hi friends, it is Saturday morning on October 3rd, so the announcement for the 2020 Booktube Prize winners were just announced about 45 minutes ago, and I just remembered that I need to watch to see who won, so I'm going to watch and see who won and show you some of my live reactions as we go. Wow. 
that's a lot of judges. Okay, Robert, get on with it, please. So my top three picks were Women Talking was three, Lainey was two, and Go Runner was one. Aha! Oh, interesting. I put 10 minutes and 38 seconds in my fifth place, I think. I don't really like that one, but I know a lot of people did. Yeah. Oh, I love her. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I'm so happy with those. Yeah, as I said in my previous little clip, I didn't love... 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world. The just format of it didn't really work for me. Oh my God, my cat is like in need of little stomach cuddles. Um, are you stuck? What is happening? There you go. You're stuck. Hi everyone, I got interrupted by my dad coming home, but I just wanted to kind of wrap up my thoughts. So as I was saying, 10 minutes, 38 seconds, which it was, got the silver medal was not my favorite it just like the format of it didn't work very well for me but I do know that a lot of people really like that one so I'm not surprised that it came in second um I do think Elise Schock is like a talented novelist that I'm intrigued to read more from but that particular novel just didn't really work for me and then I'm happy about Women Talking I think Women Talking is also a really fantastic novel um I did like Lanny better but I also think Lanny is a bit more of a marmite book and so I'm not surprised that it didn't make it to the top three. I'll be intrigued. I'll definitely be looking at the numbers later today because I do love data. I'm just super happy that Girl and Other won. I think Bernadine Everisto's work in that novel is just phenomenal. And I think it really, you know, what she was intending to do, she did so well. And I think it's, there's just so much to unpack there, but it's also just such an enjoyable and pleasurable novel to read that, yeah, I'm so happy that it won. Um, I don't have a ton to say about the nonfiction books. I really, I'd maybe read like two of them. Um, I am potentially going to judge nonfiction or try to judge nonfiction next year, as I do love nonfiction, but I'm very picky about my nonfiction. I like science nonfiction and historical nonfiction, but I'm not a big memoir reader. And I think that is potentially different than many of the other nonfiction judges. So we'll see if I actually go for the nonfiction judging next year. But I was happy to see say nothing was in silver, like was second place as that's one that I've wanted to read since it came out. And I've heard just nothing but good things about that. So definitely intrigued about that one. And then the first one, oh, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, I felt like was obviously going to win because I've just heard nothing but absolutely phenomenal things about that one as well and I do want to read that one for sure but obviously it's a very hard-hitting topic that's presented and not memoir and then No Visible Bruces also sounds very good but again also like very intense hard-hitting work being discussed there but excited to see that kind of nonfiction about like uncovering women's experiences of trauma is something that the fellow booktube prize judges care about so yeah overall i'm super happy with the results definitely gonna be looking into them later but i think that's gonna close out this little reaction slash my thoughts and rankings video if you are new to my channel through the booktube prize my name is jenny i'd love to have you stick around and subscribe i actually will be posting my september wrap-up hopefully tomorrow sunday october 4th when you're watching this which will be today um so if you want to kind of see what kind of my other reading outside of the book two prize looks like i will have that video up tomorrow so yeah i think that's everything i hope you have a great rest of your day whenever you're watching this and i will talk to you next time